Hi everybody, it's Kat from Foul Fortress Farm again. Well, it's a rainy gray day because we have some of the outliers of the Florence hurricane coming through our area. So I thought it was a great day to make soup. I'd like to show you how I make my ham and bean soup. So let's go over the ingredients. First of all, I have some smoked ham bones, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit more in, in just a moment. Over here, I have two cups each of carrots and uh, celery in a rough chop. doesn't have to be too much because this is all going to be cooking for quite a long time. I also have four cups of chopped onion. And right here, I have two pounds of white beans. I'm using Great Northern beans. Now you can use any sort of dried beans that you want. For me, ham and bean soup always means white beans. But I'm sure that you could use dried kidney beans or dried pinto beans or well pretty much any bean of your choice. Of course, since this is going to be cooking for several hours, I wouldn't use something like lentils because lentils will just fall away into mush. So, I have two pounds of the white northern beans here, and I've rinsed them, and I've kind of picked through to get any of the kind of icky ones out, the ones that are bro broken or disfigured. Over here, I have my garlic, and remember, I really love garlic. So, right, this is probably not quite a cup of roughly chopped garlic here. We, of course, have our salt and our freshly ground pepper. And over here, I've got about the equivalent of uh, three bay leaves, about a tablespoon of dried thyme, and a heavy dash, well, no, not a heavy dash, I would say probably a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Finally, over here, I have some fresh Italian parsley that I'm going to put in just at the end for some added brightness and flavor. So, let me go ahead and talk to you about our smoked pork bones. Okay, let's talk about the smoked ham bones. Uh, a while ago, we helped some friends process their pigs, and one of those pigs came to us, and I saved a lot of the bones. There's actually a lot of meat on these bones, and what I did with them is I put them in my smoker for about two hours so that they have a nice smoky flavor on them. They've been in the uh, freezer, sealed not terribly well, uh, so the meat is a little bit dry. But all the flavor and the collagen and the deliciousness of the bones is in there. And if you ever process your own pigs, do save the bones because they make fantastic stock. And again, you can smoke them put them, you know, seal them up and then put them in your freezer and then throw them in with a pot of beans and it will give wonderful flavor to whatever you're cooking. Okay, so here I am at the stove. I've got my cast iron pot preheated and I added a tablespoon of butter that's now melted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the onions and saute them until they're translucent. One of the things that will help is I'm going to go ahead and get some salt in there. That's probably about a half a teaspoon of salt. Now I know that a lot of people say don't salt your beans while they're cooking until after they soften up. I've never had a problem with it because I always cook my dried beans for a long, low and slow period. The onions are starting to cook now, so I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. Yum, garlic. 
and we're blessed. I had a good garlic harvest this season. So that's our garlic. Now again, I'm sauteing the onions until they're a bit translucent. There's going to be a little bit of browning, especially in a cast iron pan. Uh, you can also use, actually, uh, a stock pot. I have a nice stainless steel three gallon stock pot that I would normally do this in because it offers so much room. I'm using this so that we can see the things uh, cooking. Okay, I've been sauteing the onions over medium heat for about three, maybe four minutes, and they're softening up nicely. So, and of course I've added the garlic as well. So now it's time to add the carrots and the celery. Alright, stir that in nicely. And you know what, since I only added about a teaspoon of salt earlier, I'm going to add just a bit more to make sure that the carrots and celery have good flavor. And at this time, I'm also going to add my pepper. And again, pepper in many ways is to your taste. I would, for this dish, add at least a teaspoon. Um, but being me, and because I love pepper, I'm going to add probably about a teaspoon and a half. And I'm also going to add the herbs and spices that I said before. Again, we've got the bay, the thyme, and the red pepper flakes. Now, if you don't like things spicy, of course, you can omit the pe pepper flakes. Remember, all my recipes are what I like and what my family likes. You should remember that you can always adjust recipes to your tastes. So don't be afraid to experiment. If there's an herb or a spice that you'd like to use, like to give it a try, go ahead and try it. While the vegetables are being sautéed, you don't have to stir them constantly, but I like to keep them moving a bit. This way, everything gets a little bit of heat on it and a little bit of softening going. And of course, the uh, herbs and spices get uh, coated onto these vegetables. All right, my onions look nice and translucent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my beans, which are over here. My beans are added. Stir them in a bit. Now, since I'm going to add the bones, I'm going to push the beans away a little bit and make a divot so that the bones go are, are immersed in the beans and everything. Okay. That looks good. So now I'm going to add the water. What I have here is a gallon of water. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in. And it might be a bit much. Well, 
just right. I still have a little bit left. Stir that up just a little bit. Make sure that everything gets water. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Obviously with this so full, I don't want to bring it up to a full boil, but I want to make sure that those bubbles have started. Once they've started, I'm going to turn the heat way down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move it to a smaller burner and use a flame tamer to keep it on a bare simmer for at least three hours. Well, as you see, this is now starting to simmer. You can see the bubbles. And this is a very, very full pot. I would actually recommend that you use a larger pot if you're going to make these same amounts. You can, of course, half the recipe if you want. But we used a smaller pot so that we could film things properly. What I'm going to do now that this is simmering, I'm going to turn off the heat on my big, bur big burner and I'm going to switch it over to a small burner. But I'm going to put it on top of a flame tamer. And what the flame tamer does is, of course, it disperses the heat and helps things be very low. So I'm going to switch it over to the flame tamer on the smaller burner and also cover it. You're going to have to keep an eye on things because you might have a little bit of spillover which is okay. And what I would recommend too is checking on it about once every 30 to 45 minutes to make sure that the beans haven't gone dry. Um, if they have gone dry, go ahead and add some more water. Now this is going to be very stew-like in texture when it's done because I'm doing it in a much smaller pot and I haven't used as much water. If I wanted to make it much more soup-like, I'd use a much bigger pot and just add more water, perhaps a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons. It's always easy though, start with less water and then add it as you go along. So this is going to be low and slow for at least four hours. I'll see you when it's done. Now it's time to chop up the parsley. I want to add the parsley just before the beans are done so that the maximum flavor for the parsley infuses the whole thing. So what I'm doing is just pinching off the leaves and if you get a little bit of stem that's just fine the stem has flavor too I think for the amount of soup stew that we've made I would say maybe you want about a half a cup of chopped parsley and I like Italian parsley I think it's more flavorful than the curly parsley but again your, your supermarket might not have anything but the curly parsley and that's fine. What I like to do is with the leaves, as you saw, I bundled them up and then I just kind of chop them. Now remember, sharp knife is a safe knife but you have to think of things. When you're chopping like this, make sure that the hand that's helping things push under the knife are curled under a little bit and that way you'll be much less likely to slice your fingers. And Believe me, I know I've sliced my fingers many times. Want a little bit more than that for the addition. And I would actually also suggest that you add, you, you chop more than you're going to need to put in at the last moment because then you can use some for garnish as well. There we go. And again, just lift these off. You can actually also save the stems for uh, the parsley 
And if you do, you can use them for stock. You can use them, you could probably chop them up and blend them and freeze them, and that would also give another parsley punch when you need it. Mm. Well, it's been about two and a half hours since I put this on simmer, and my beans have gotten nice and soft. No, that one doesn't want to. Oh, it's hot. But yeah, they've, they're nice and squishy. What I want to do now is I want to test for seasoning. It definitely need more salt and pepper, but that little bit of red pepper flakes that I put in has a nice little bite in the background. Not a lot, just enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put another teaspoon of salt in here. And then probably about the same amount of pepper. And I'm going to put most of the parsley that I chopped up in there. You can certainly put all of it in if you want to, but I like to reserve a little bit to garnish on top of the soup bowl. Stir that up. You can see how all that meat has come off the bone with the simmer. that up a little bit. I'm going to let this go about another half hour uncovered just so the rest of the seasonings can blend and then I'll be ready to serve it up. So I'll be right back with a cup of soup for you. Okay, so the soup has finished cooking. Everything has melded with flavors. So again, don't forget to check for seasoning. I fished out the bones and let them cool off a bit and if they still have meat on them you're going to want to take the meat off and cut it up into little pieces or shred it with your hands and just put it right in the soup and I'll finish the rest of this later. I've also fished out a couple of the bay leaves because they don't actually taste very good <laughs> just by themselves. All right. So let's go ahead and dish some of this up. I like to serve this when possible with some nice fresh bread. Oh boy, that looks really good. And maybe a nice glass of wine, if that's to your taste. There we go. There's the soup, a little scattering of fresh parsley on top. And another nice thing to do is also to grate a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top. All right. There you go. That's my ham and bean soup. I hope you make it sometime and that on a cold and blustery day it provides a nice warmth to your stomach. This is Kat from the Foul Fortress. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.